Well, hello again, and welcome back to our Bible study. We are in Psalm 24 today. I have prepared coffee, and I am ready. I only drink cold coffee, though. I'm actually trying to stop drinking, like, Monster and Red Bull and stuff like that, and so cold coffee is the only thing I can tolerate. Hot coffee? No thanks. Okay, Psalm 24. <laughs> Not that any of you needed to know that. But Psalm 24 is what you need to know about. Psalm 24 was written by, can you guess? It's written by David, and there is a reference to Psalm 24 in the New Testament. It's actually in the book of 1 Corinthians, Paul's letter to the Corinthian church, verse or chapter 10, verse 26. We have three major themes that kind of encapsulate the chapter. The first one is the greatness of God. Pretty simple. The second one, the attributes of a man who God will accept into his presence. And number three, the joy and privilege of receiving God into our presence. And the, the outline for the chapter will follow these three themes. As far as our definitions, uh, I have two. Um, the second one is Selah, which we've covered several times, so I won't take the time to go over that one again. It's on the outline. If you want it, you can download that on our website. We will talk briefly about Jacob. Now, Jacob is a proper name. Jacob was the grandson of Abraham and the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to see that name in chapter 24, and the way that it's being used is not necessarily to refer back to that particular individual, but sometimes he and his name are used to refer to the nation of Israel collectively. So it's kind of like a synonym for the name Israel or the, the people of Israel. Sometimes they just say Jacob, and that stands for the entire nation because he was the father of the nation. As we go over to page number two, keep in mind that our themes will outline the chapter. So theme number one aligns with section number one, theme two aligns with section two, and, and so on for all three. The first section, verses one through two, the earth belongs to God. So David opens Psalm 24 with words worshiping God and acknowledging that the whole earth and everything on the earth, all living things, all non-living things, us, we all belong to God, the creator. David recognized that it was God who had even created the land on which all living things, well, at least land living things dwell. And God had founded that land in the midst of the oceans. You can read about that in Genesis chapter 1, verses 9 through 10, when God collects all the water in one place, and then the dry land appears. So David says, that was you, and then you put everything on the earth that's living on there, created it all, so we all belong to you. Now, section number two. Of the people who dwell on this land, who can come into the presence of God? Who can dwell with God is our section heading for verses three through six. So in verses three through six, David asks a very similar question to the one that he posed back in Psalm 15, if you remember. He asks, quote, who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place. I think in other words, what he's saying basically is what kind of man can go into the presence of God and be accepted? What kind of attributes must that man possess? And David concludes that it must be a man who has clean hands, a pure heart, a man who does not speak lies, and whose soul is not given to deceit. So an honest man, a man who's trying to live an upright and a righteous life. This is the kind of man that can go into the presence of God and be accepted. This kind of man will receive blessings from God. Okay, so section number one, the greatness of God and what he's created and everything belongs to him. Section number two is the attributes of this man who God will accept. Now in section number three, we're going to talk about the joy of being in the presence of God. So that takes us to verses 7 through 10 as we conclude the chapter. Gates swing open for the king of glory. We have some figurative language here. In these final verses, we see David welcoming God into the gates. Now, which gates exactly he's talking about, we're not told in the text, but I think it seems very likely that these are either the gates of Jerusalem, David's city, or the gates to the temple of the Lord, which was in Jerusalem. David writes, quote, Lift up your head, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. That's verse 7. So David is speaking to the gates uh, as if they can hear him and as if they can respond to him, encouraging them to open up so that the king of glory, so that God in his presence can come in and be with David and his people. 
He then concludes the psalm describing God with more words of worship and calling him the Lord of hosts who is mighty in battle. So once again, praising the strength of God. So we see those three themes in the three sections that we have here. The greatness of God, the characteristics of a man who can come into God's presence, and then the great blessing that it is to be in the presence of the King of glory, to have him within your gates. Now we can finish up with our application for the modern day. Everything on the earth rightfully belongs to God, and that includes your heart and your home. The question for us is, are the doors of our homes open to the Lord? Are you open to his teaching, to his lordship over to your over your life? Are you open to his instruction, uh, at times open to his correction and his criticism? Are the doors of your home swung open, like the gates of the city, to welcome him inside? Or, in contrast to that, are you keeping him out completely? Or, also in contrast, are you keeping the doors partially shut? Maybe you're willing to welcome God into part of your life, but not give him lordship over the whole thing. Don't withhold from the creator what rightfully belongs to him. And you, you belong to him. I belong to him. We should give ourselves to him. When we give our hearts and our homes to God, we'll find our proper place in the world and we'll discover where we're meant to be. And we'll, dis- we'll discover the, the great pleasure that it is to be in communion with God. You know, the, the sinful world wants to convince you that you're going to find your greatest joy and that you're going to find your purpose out there in the world that Satan has his influence over, right? That that's where you need to go to find happiness. And, and it's, it's a complete lie, right? Who knows best your place in the world, how to show you that place and how to give you great joy? Of course, it's your creator. So swing open the doors of your heart and your home to him, you'll never find your place by resisting the creator because the earth is the Lord's, according to verse one, and that includes you and it includes me.